We've seen a very rapid um, recovery in recent times, not just in terms of the way the house prices have moved, but also in the way that transactions have um, gathered some pace. Um, there are questions being asked by a number of senior economists and think tanks as to whether or not the pace of that recovery um, is too quick. Clearly, with prices in the UK growing at about 10% um, a year and prices in London growing somewhat higher than that, um, it's difficult to see that that level of growth is sustainable as we see interest rates rise, for example. The question is, when will the market cool and how will the market cool and how it will respond to various external factors. One of the things that we've always said is that in the early part of recovery you would see house price growth run ahead of earnings, particularly in that low interest environment. And if you look at what's happening in the market, there are a fairly unique set of circumstances. There is significant levels of pent up demand because housing transactions have been so low for such a period and they're now increasing as people come back to the market. So that's increasing demand at a time when interest rates are very low and that facilitates some of the high levels of house price growth we're seeing at the moment, particularly when you've got a high proportion of the market who aren't reliant on mortgage finance. So they are um, cash buyers and freely free um, and able um, to move. That's driving high house price growth. Uh, the question is what happens next? And we know that over the period of the five years that interest rates will rise. And I suspect that as more mortgage buyers come back to the market, and interest rates rise themselves, that will slow the pace of house price growth, meaning that over the period of the next five years or so, overall, that house price growth will be driven by earnings much more than anything else. Increasing interest rates are, are likely to affect affordability for the mortgaged market, um, and that in turn is likely to restrict the capacity for price growth um, within that market. In addition to that, we have a number of other factors which are really yet to be built into what's happening to house prices. And at the forefront of that is the mortgage market review, which is restricting the availability of mortgage debt to people who frankly shouldn't be in the market or can't afford um, to be homeowners. And that, if you like, reduces a number of the risks um, around the housing market or indeed um, a housing market bubble forming. You know, that said, some of those measures will not affect the cash buyers and what that may well mean is that we end up with a two-speed market, which the cash buyers are um, operating at one level and those with a significant mortgage requirement um, operating at another. That can't, however, continue forever. At some point, you need the mortgage buyers to step into the place of the people who own their property outright, and that could mean a slowing of overall rates of house price growth a little further down the line. There's um, a general consensus that current rates of house price growth are unsustainable. Um, we would expect the Bank of England to react in some manner, and there is plenty of talk of that within the press. The question really is about how they do that, and they face a number of options. One of them is to raise interest rates a little earlier than they were otherwise anticipating. Of course, the difficulty with that is that it could have a knock-on impact on the economy. The other alternative is to look at the availability of mortgage credit and to see how not just the mortgage market review pans out, but to look at other macro prudential tools um, to cool the housing market. And I would envisage that there will be something of a policy response over the period of the next six to 12 months, and that will probably act to slow current rates of house price growth. I think one of the things that we've seen over the period of the last 12 months is that housing generally has risen up the political agenda. And whereas previously house price growth was considered a good thing uh, because it fueled sentiment amongst consumers and then could impact upon um, consumer spending, you know, that's not necessarily the case at the moment, largely because we have first-time buyers who are finding it incredibly difficult to access um, home ownership or people already on the housing market finding it difficult to move up the housing ladder and for those people house price growth can be seen as much of a negative um, as a positive so there is a whole change in the way that we view the housing market um, and house price growth and that's reflected in some of the further work that we've done in our publication looking in the change in the shape of the way that we occupy property.